<laughs> Hi, everybody. <laughs> this is Resource at Home, and um, we're here with Carla LaBianca and, and Rosanna Martinez. Hello. <laughs> joining us as a South Orange resident who I know personally because um, I was fortunate enough to be her uh, realtor when they were purchasing their home in South Orange and they were hailing from, guess what, Brooklyn, New York. <laughs> and she and her husband, Matthew Delegate, uh, actually own Minus Space Art Gallery in Dumbo, uh, which is a thriving art gallery to this day. And when we started our search to find them a home, one of the themes of the, of the home hunt was finding a home with um, space for them to really expand their gardening practice. So the two things were like space to hang their art in the, the incredible collection they had needed to surround them and as well um, space for them to garden. And over the past couple of years, I guess that was like in 2019, Rosanna, yes? Yes, that was. Mm -hmm. So crazy. Um, you know, I've known Rosanna to become someone in the community who is just like very present with her uh, inspiration and love of gardening. Um, and it was really inspiring. It's really inspiring for, I think, other people to see what she's doing with her um, plantings and gardening and the space that she's created to garden in, which I think is also a space for her to practice yoga in and just live life with her family in a very um, beautiful way, as far as I can tell from all of your posting and the home that you've created. So we wanted to invite her here today to speak about her gardening. We talked about how we could uh, approach the subject without it being overwhelming um, and how she could share sort of practical and, and advice for sort of a, a simple um, template of, of gardening. And we thought, you know, herb gardening and you know, stuff that is like practical and usable and in your daily life and not overwhelming. But I just said a, a mouthful. So thank you so much for being here, Rosanna. And one of the questions I just want to start with is because you guys are artists and um, you mentioned at some point in some of your writing that I read that art and gardening were kind of linked in your in your world, in your mind. And you dry, dry, you draw, draw inspiration from gardening for art, et cetera. So I would love to just hear a little bit about that because that's so interesting and beautiful. Well, thank you. First of all, just hello to everybody. So nice to see uh, your faces here and to connect, um, even though it's through technology, but it's so great. And thank you for having me here. I love... Um, the research show uh, from the beginning when we first moved and we saw what you two do uh, for this community. So I am honored to be part of this series. Um, the pandemic made um, some things fun and good. And I think uh, these kind of conversations are an example of how something good came out of that very difficult time. Um, so back to your question, yes, we move in 2019, and as you know, and I see that many people here know who we are, so yes, we're artists, we have been practicing for many years, and we have the gallery for almost 20 years, uh, next year, it turns 20, so um, it's been a long ride, and it's part of who we are, and when we were looking for um, houses and ready to make that change. Uh, our apartment was way too small for us at the time, for our son, for the dog. Um, so we decided to jump to the garden state. And although I had a roof, I had begun, I began a rooftop garden right after our son was born. He was probably like 10 months or so. Um, and it really grew and expanded. It started with a couple of um, containers. And from there, I developed it more and more every year. That was like my Mother's Day gift. It was an expansion to the rooftop garden. And basically, it was going to Ikea and the hardware store to get 
things for the rooftop garden. Mm -hmm. um, and that really became my art practice. Like I always, I was always um, working with nature and the environment in, in my head, you know, always thinking about it. I grew up in the tropics in Puerto Rico. So I, I was very much surrounded by nature as a, as a child. So I think that was part of my art practice, thinking of the earth and, 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 and nature. And then the, when I saw that, uh, I, I mostly did sculpture and pre-making. And from there, I just made the connection from what my, my results, right? My art was into this, I call it like a, uh, garden as a living sculpture because it really is a living sculpture that's how I see it that every time it changes every time it takes a different shape so I that's I think the connection uh, to art uh, I'm thinking about light I'm thinking about composition I'm thinking about texture I'm thinking about color so it really is like a painter or a, a sculptor, or even a performance. All these yes. things that you take into consideration when you are creating, uh, but how to do it with basically seeds and plants. Uh, examples, we, we have seen examples, and I wrote a couple, so I will not forget, you know, Monet as a painter, how he uh, moved from the city and ended up being completely inspired by where they were living or he was living with his family. Uh, if we go and walk through the High Line, how uh, he had, and I saw, and let me see if I can say it correctly. Odof, I think is how you say it, the, the Dutch landscaper and artist, how he made an incredible garden when you walk through the High Line with native plants and perennials. And um, so it really, again, it's about composition uh, and, and kind of involving our senses as if we were in a museum or in some sort of um, art installation. Yeah, and not to get too esoteric because it's easy to get esoteric. I know, <laughs> yes. But, but I do also think that like, you know, I, I also have an art background and um, I feel like gardening is, it's a co-creation. Right. So you are you are part creator and nature is part creator, whereas, you know, in art, I feel like you can't subjugate too much. You can't like force a painting. You can't force, you know, you have to be open to things coming through and expressing themselves through you. And I think that like nature is it, it's a it's kind of just listening to talk right now is just making me think of that aspect of gardening where, you know, you're not really in control. You're like, you know, you're working with something and you're, you're, you're making something beautiful with another entity or element that is nature. And that's, um, I'm sure that, the, you know, along the path, there's lots of, not failure, but there's lots of things that don't work. And there are lots of things that do work and you learn, you know, what works best. Um, and yet you can't really control, right? In a way, I imagine. Absolutely. No, it's, I mean, you plan. And yeah. you, you plan and you hope that that is what will happen. And sometimes, yes, like you said, sometimes you get, um, especially with food, and you can enjoy it, right? Uh, and, and eat it and say, okay, that, that plant did so well to the point that we were able to cook it and, and eat it. Uh, but yeah. there are many times when things do not work. And these are some of the things that we want to talk about today because the whole thing is it's about hoping that the experience that I had growing a, a garden in an urban environment where there were so many challenges to bring things to a rooftop right. to water a garden on a rooftop and it was possible um, how yeah. that can help you to just think that this is not really hard it really is not. It's all about paying attention. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's that's the key. Absolutely. And so uh, for this particular talk, you know, you kind of we we honed into uh, like this idea of simplicity and sort of that it's simple. It can be simple. Um, and so 
kind of, we kind of settled on the idea of an herb garden. Um, and just if you could speak a little more on like how, why that is a, an approachable and, you know, unintimidating, not overwhelming kind of thing to take on if you're not a super gardener. Absolutely. Um, yes, I think gardening is something that, you know, when I hear people say, I have a black thumb, I don't have a green thumb. And I feel like it's like cooking. You have to get into it and make mistakes and see what it works for you and what doesn't. For gardening, I and Lisa, we all talk about this right before we started uh, the, the conversation with the rest of the group, but we talk about which zone do we live in? So this is zone 7A. I had no idea that this was zone 7A when I started a garden. I had no idea what that meant. So once you start learning of how uh, your the plants grow in your area, then you start realizing, okay, so I would like to grow bananas, but I cannot grow bananas here, that kind of thing. So then you adjust to what you like, which is something that I stress a lot. Like I grow herbs, that's one of my favorites. And I think it's so easy because then if you start growing other things, things can get intimidating and complicated. Uh, and I don't say complicated because they really are, is because for a beginner, it can seem complicated. Um, so a, a good start is herbs because we like to cook and we're gonna use them and we're gonna enjoy them. So if that's where you are, if you like to cook, if you like to grow, if you like to smell amazing rosemary when you walk out of your house, you can do that. You don't even have to eat them if you don't want. We have actually rosemary in the front as bushes because that's what we like. Um, so it's possible to grow herbs in an easier way that um, the technique, and, and this applies to everything like I was doing pre-making and I remember going to the print shop and I'm like, I don't like the technique. I like, I like the process of making something, but I don't wanna follow, it's, photo it's like photography. I don't wanna follow all the, all the rules, right? You wanna kind of make it your own. So I feel like with herbs or with any, you know, some people like to focus on flowers. For, for us, since we're talking about herbs, you can do that as well. And I think the first step that I will say, not only learning about your zone, but what is it that you like? What is the food that you like? What do you want to grow? If the, you know, if if um, Instagram is everybody's growing onions, you don't have to grow onions if you don't like onions. Just think about who you are and what you like. We like a lot of um, Mediterranean food, so it made sense for us to try to grow rosemary and oregano and all these uh, dry kind of uh, perennials, which do well here in this area. Okay. So that's, that's how I started. That's kind of a major clue right there is that yeah. those are grow well in this, in this environment, in this 7A, I guess, right? Yes. Um, <clears throat> and so if I, okay, so if I was a novice, which I am, and I just said, hey, Rosanna, I really want to start an herb garden. What would you say the first thing that you would recommend for me to do is? So for for the garden, I will say um, pay attention to how the light um, passes through your you know, backyard or the side yard or whatever you think you want to start a garden. Of course, because we're talking about herbs, I'm thinking you may want to go directly to where your kitchen door is or your kitchen access to the kitchen. So you don't have to go all the way to get and grab your herbs to come and, and cook with them. So that's how we did it. We have the herb garden, which is basically a raised bed and a couple of uh, containers because I love to grow in, in containers too. If you live in an apartment, you can do that too, or a windowsill, or uh, there are many possibilities. It doesn't have to be an incredible garden. Mm -hmm. One herb on, on your countertop is a garden if that's the herb that you like. Yeah. If you like mint and you want to grow mint in a container, that's fine. So the first thing that I did here 
was to look at how the light and the position of, uh, you know, the cardinal points, basically. So you're very in tune to where is north, south, and obviously south is going to be sunnier. So that's where you want to focus your garden uh, for things that need a lot of sun. For example, those Mediterranean herbs, they need, they don't like a lot of like wetness, not wet soil. Uh, so that is a good place to put something like that. And I have them all together and I have um, some behind me just to show you, we can talk about that uh, now or a little later, however you prefer, Lisa. See if yeah. you group them by how, what they like. This is called companion planting. It's like having a relationship, how plants yeah. have relationship, what works with what. So I will say group, if you want to do the Mediterranean food and you are interested in that, just put those all together, like rosemary, sage, oregano, um, what's the other one? Rosemary uh, and thyme. So I have those together. Okay. Uh, for wetness, you can do like, and I don't mean wet that they are gonna be soaking, but obviously they like a little bit more water less sun so that's parsley and chives and uh, uh, dill all those like to be water a little bit more so you can create groupings of what you like um, again very close to your kitchen if that's the case that's better if you don't have the space for a raised bed then go with the containers and you can do individual containers and they sell so many wonderful uh, varieties of containers now. Containers, what I had on the rooftop were containers um, with a little tank at the bottom, the self-watering containers. So then I didn't have to go so many times to water up there. Right. And the herbs that are behind you, are those herbs that are going to go outside or are they just going to live there? No, these are going outside. I just bought them for uh, to show you uh, mm -hmm. for today. And I have like, this is rosemary. And I just went to uh, the hardware store. You know, they are screaming, please plant me. As you can see, they are really, they are really screaming at me. Uh, water me more because they have the different soil. So this one feels really dry. This is oregano. I really have to water this. Um, and then I have uh, lavender, which I don't cook with it, but I love the way it looks. Lavender mm. is such a beautiful, um, sorry, we have a bird. So if you hear a bird, it's our bird back there uh, talking about how much she likes lavender. Uh, <laughs> but we do have lavender um, in the front of the house, on the side, and also to our side garden is very narrow because it's really the side of the house. So what we did is that we have the vegetables along the kitchen window and the um, herbs kind of like the back side. And to connect those two um, areas, which are very small, it sounds like it's big, but it's really tiny. Uh, we use lavender um, and it's so nice for the bees, for the pollinators. We have a lot of birds. So you really create a little ecosystem on top of feeling super healthy by going outside and looking at your herbs and cooking with them. You're like, okay, I'm doing something more than just um, making something pretty. Yeah. Yeah. So, so to recap what the sort of um, essential uh, aspects of what you're saying are, look at where the light is. Yes, light. Mm -hmm. How it also, travels. A 7, 7A, the zone is important. Yes. Um, and also essential, essential uh, concept of what do you like to eat? What do you want to grow? So yeah, that exactly. combination of three things gives you clues to and obviously I start. right and then there are obviously great resources for you know I think you mentioned several other things that were like well these things need more water so obviously you can find that yes I, I'll you. show you yeah yeah so uh the way I group things and I'll show you a little bit so it's this is cilantro 
And you can see that he's suffering because he's too cold for it. So some of the, the plants that you can have all year and some of them come back are parsley. Um, and this is for the wet kind of wetter garden, the dill. Mm -hmm. And let's see, what's the other one? Parsley, dill. Sorry that I'm giving you my back and the chives, which I don't have with me, but I have chives everywhere in the garden. Uh, chives, I don't necessarily cook with them, but they are very easy plant to the point that on the rooftop garden, I remember having so many plants that one of the neighbors came upstairs and he's like, are we going to eat all these chives? You know, he was so worried that we were going to have to eat. I'm like, no, 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 you grow herbs also for the beauty because the, the, uh, the chives have a beautiful flower. I don't know if you have seen, they are, they are part of the onion family, like alliums. They are beautiful bulbs with be uh, pink or lavender flowers. So you can decorate your garden with herbs as well. It can be so, aesthetic. Oh, yeah. So the ones that I will try right now, please in, uh, stop me if I'm talking too much once I start, but you, you can put the, the parsley and the dill together. And usually in our garden, they come back, little plants, they come back mm -hmm. uh, every year. And of course you can replenish every year with That's maybe right buying yeah. this. Yeah, they grow, okay. they, honestly, I'm not sure if they're, perennial for this zone all the time. I'm not that expert, but what I think is that because they seed, the seeds fall on the ground, right? On the raised beds. So then they, the seed actually comes back and new plants happen. I don't think it's the same plants from last year, but I think Understood. it's just the seeds that. Mm -hmm. Right. That okay, that's a great distinction. I see that Carla has a question. Um, yeah is when is the right time to plant? So for this uh, area, the safest time, they say April or really for sure May 15, which is Mother's Day. By May, um, 15. May 15, you're probably on the safer side. Like right now, as of today, you saw how cold it was. So I brought things inside because I was worried. I also have, over the years, I have invested in some things that I recommend if you're serious about it. It's good to have always um, netting. It's always good to have um, some sort of plastic. It can be like a rubber made container if that's what you have or um, even those uh, takeout containers. If you wash it, you can keep the seedlings uh, covered during a, a day like today or even fabric. And they sell all kinds of things, but you can really find things at home to do it. Um, so I do those things because I, again, I've been doing this for some years, but if you're starting and you just wanna be safe, um, so the sales, I think plant sales around the community here start in May. So yeah, by May 15, right? right? So by May 15, you can go ahead and plant your, your things outside. If something happens that then they get cold, again, putting a, a sheet, a blanket or something overnight, it will prevent them for, from freezing and from you losing those new plants. Okay. So here's a question. The, the um, parsley, the chives, and the cilantro that you spoke about that need more water, do they also need a fair amount of sun or are they more kind of shady plants? They like shade. They obviously like the sun. But one thing that I wanted to say about the cilantro, I will not, it doesn't love super hot, but it doesn't like this cold either. So. Mm -hmm. It's a very um, sensitive plant, I will say. And I added, but I'm, this is one of those mistakes that I have not mastered the cilantro. Uh, and it's a good example that if, you f if it fails, if it doesn't make it, that's okay. What I yeah. usually do is that I plant it probably in May. This one, I'm, I'm gonna probably put it outside now, but I'm gonna cover it with maybe double plastic or something. So it, um, it survives these cold uh, nights. 
Um, but then what I do is that I know that when it starts to be really hot, I know the cilantro is not going to be really good because it's going to be too hot. Last year, I did something different, which was because I also have vegetables. I grew the cilantro underneath the okra. So the okra creates a little bit of a canopy. It looks like an umbrella and the okra provided some shade for the cilantro. So it lasted a little longer, but again, it's one of those kind of tricky herbs that yes. it just needs a little bit more care or more attention. I yeah. think basil is kind of like the same uh, at this time. During the summer, basil goes happy and grows everywhere. It likes a little shade. So for basil, and to move on from the cilantro, um, I, what I do with the basil is that I plant it around the tomato plants. And I also add marigolds, which are very nice flowers uh, and easy to grow. And the combination of the tomato with the marigold and the basil is good because the base, the tomato provides the shade. The basil gives the tomatoes a better taste, a nicer right. taste. And the marigolds keep the pests away because they have a very strong smell. So that is called that companion planting. And you can find that information. If you Google, if you're going to plant cilantro, you can say, what goes well with cilantro? What can you plant with cilantro? Companion planting. And it really works. It's very nice. Yeah, that's great. I was going to say that sounds way too advanced for me, but I guess I could probably exactly. research it and I figure it out. That's um, why I didn't want to say this, but, yeah, yeah, uh, but you know, go that far because it, it really, you don't really have to do the tomatoes and the marigolds and the, you can do just the basil, just make sure that it has a little shade at some yeah. time, time of the day. Lisa, did you, are you frozen? Yes, she was frozen, She's right? Frozen. Okay, then I, I will take over for her until, uh, until uh, she unfreezes herself. Yes. <laughs> oh, here I am. Um, okay, so, so we had a good uh, roundup until then, time to plant, all that good stuff. Um, I really like the idea of, of mixing plants Rosanna, like um, like flowering plants with herbs and such. Um, I like the idea of bringing uh, your kitchen, your really your kitchen herb garden um, to your back door, to your porch door. I think that's such a great idea. Um, can you talk a little bit, you know, I think that one of the things that plagues most of us homeowners nowadays are, are deer, squirrels, um chipmunks i mean i i can't tell you how many friends and 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 whatnot tell me about you know how their how their plants are getting destroyed by these things can you talk a little bit about how you actually um when it's not cold outside how you still protect your plants from all yeah, of the elements that's a great that? question and i have to say that we had some friends in brooklyn that they had very bad squirrels too we didn't because our roof was a little higher uh, but they had a deck and the squirrels will have a party with their, yeah. with their uh, herbs and their, especially tomatoes and things like that. Um, I use a lot of garlic everywhere. <laughs> garlic is like my number one pest control. Um, so I even have it near the roses because uh, supposedly it's good for the deer to, to keep the deer away, although we don't have a lot but sometimes and i have planted garlic um, or alliums anything onion family because it smells really strong oh, now that you. you would have thought yeah, about that exactly yeah so we have roses and alliums together um that way hopefully i mean for the most part they don't devour the plants uh in terms of our like 
food, then I definitely use the garlic. First of all, because we use garlic for everything when we cook. So it's very natural for us to have an incredible amount of garlic. And I don't want to go there to, um, to overwhelm people, but garlic is something very easy to grow pretty easy to grow and I'm happy to discuss later. But that's one of the things that I use. I also um, try to do, like I was mentioning, the marigolds, anything, any plant that smells strong, uh, bugs and animals tend to not like it. So I try to do that as well. Now for bigger protection, because of course the squirrels during the pandemic, I remember everybody saying, what is going on with these squirrels? The squirrels were having a party with all of our tomatoes um, here in this area. It's and, true, they were everywhere. I've, I've right? never seen so many squirrels. I, I had people complaining to me left and right about the squirrel population. And I think <laughs> they're coming back this year. I've seen some crazy things already. Last yes. year, they were quieter and this year they are not. So you know that Obviously, our gardens are more exposed than in the city because of the, the, the larger uh, amount of animals here, but it's, it's possible. I, what I use, I have a lot of uh, hoops. I use hoops and I use mesh and I use um, other frames that have uh, something that I can put. It comes frame for the raised bed. And it, it has two different um, types of fabric on the top. That you, it's one is like a plastic with a zipper, and the second one is a mesh that then you change it when it starts to get hot. You don't want to cook your plants in there in under that plastic. So I have those things to prevent the squirrels. Is that me making that noise or no? Okay. <laughs> so I, I thought that it was me that maybe I, I did something. But so every single raised bed I have covered. My first year here, I did not cover everything. And the um, butterflies, I mean, I never had broccoli. The broccoli was full of caterpillars. So you, you make these mistakes and these are um, ways of learning of what to do for the next time. So this year... I have everything protected in some way or another. Uh, another uh, pest that is very common, Carla, is aphids, which are teeny tiny um, bugs that are almost translucent. And mosquitoes uh, or, or roses. So for that, you can do a little bit of soapy uh, water or vinegar. And again, I think the squirrels also do not like those, that kind of smell. Another okay. thing that I use is neem oil, which is a, a neem oil, is a, neem is a plant okay. and it's very strong, the smell. So you spray your um, plants with that to either um, get rid of the aphids or just to have some sort of strong smell for the, for the squirrels or the other animals. Right. I, I remember uh, learning about aphids through that childhood book, The Ladybug. I think it was an Eric Carlisle book. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, what about slugs, Rosanna? I've, you know, that's, that's another thing that has um, slugs, caterpillars. I'm just, you know, going through, you know, my yes. experience with you know, growing here, um, you know, you turn over a leaf, you see this giant green caterpillar, or you, you know, turn over some dirt and there's, um, and there's slugs in there, you know, what are- So what I are use a those? couple of things on the soil. The slugs come from the soil. So it's a little um, harder to control because you plant something and the next thing that you see is all these things eating your, yes. your, your plants. So I use- a which I, I think, I believe that they work. <laughs> so I, I just put cinnamon sticks everywhere. And sometimes that works for the squirrels as well. And even raccoons, thankfully we don't have raccoons, but when raccoons start to get into your uh, garden, you can put cinnamon or uh, cayenne pepper, anything that is going to shock them 
when they smell, right? Uh, so I use that. And the other thing that I use for the slugs is um, eggshells. When you eat, if you eat eggs, uh, instead of using them in the compost, we have a compost. Uh, but if you don't, uh, if you eat eggs, you can just uh, make them really uh, like almost pulverize them, but they don't need to be completely pulverized, just like little pieces of eggshell. And you can put that, that's really good for the plant anyway. Uh, but at the same time, um, animals do not like to crawl on the eggshells. So eggshells uh, are very helpful for that. That's amazing. I love all these organic I know. Uh, solutions yes. you're giving us. That's really cool. Well, that's another thing about growing your own herbs. Like, of course, we have buy the ones at the grocery and we can go to the farmer's market. But really, when you grow your own, you know what you are, you know yeah. the soil, you know the water, you know what you're doing. So you feel like you're definitely eating something that is not processed or is not full of uh, pesticides or anything like that. Yeah, I love the the solutions of the, the things that you have in your own kitchen to deter these pests. Like, yeah, yeah, perfect. dish soap and a little water, and you spray the roses or the aphids with that. And basically, what that does is that they cannot, you know, they sort of suffocate. Or the other thing that is good to have in your garden are ladybugs. So if you see ladybugs, that's the opposite that's a good sign because they will eat the aphids. Uh, mm -hmm. Ants also eat the aphids. So you create, back to the idea of creating your own ecosystem to help your area, um, that's just part of it too. So you bring, you bring all these um, good, good bugs, right? Basically, that's what you want. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I think that's so interesting. Um, there are a few uh, gardening centers around here that actually sell ladybugs. In case anybody yeah. here tonight or in future recordings uh, listening to this want to know how to get ladybugs, you can go to a store and buy them. Some yeah. gardening stores do sell them. I would buy them the ladybugs and they would just love it. It was just such a like, you know, win-win for everyone, I think. Um, yeah, the ladybugs were really fun for the kids. So Rosanna, I don't want to jump ahead, but I uh, am very curious to know because this is a very um, another practical aspect of the information that you can provide us. So we have, say, we have an abundant herb garden um, over you know the spring and summer, and then comes the cold weather, and you want to keep and protect and maintain the, the your your plantings that you've cultivated. How do you recommend? Um, pro you know sustaining the what you've grown over months when it's not yes, warm that's great i love that part because after all the work of growing your herbs and the cold starts and you're like no but i still want to have that that flavor right so i do a couple of things and i have examples for you so first um when you are cooking and you cut your herbs i want to show you that um, before you use them, if you keep them in a little jar like this in water, like if it was a bouquet of flowers, that is going to um, help you not get, um, you know, herbs that are already all um, dry from leaving them in the counter. If you don't need to use the whole thing, you can put this in the fridge and you can put a little bag um, or uh put them in, um, I have these wonderful bags here. I'm sorry, I have my whole workshop back here. Um, these are, um, what are these called? These are not plastic. This is, um, these are like reusable bags. It's not a Ziploc bag. It's like yeah, the it's opposite. Silicone, and I'm, it? Yes, it's silicone. And I'm forgetting yeah. the name of this brand, right? I, I think it's called I'm, Ziploc or something like that. Like a zip no, something. It's, no, it's called something else. Let's uh, see. It, it will come back to me. Okay. But anyway, these are great. So you can put your herbs in here. If you, if you collect a lot of basil and you made your pesto and you still have more basil for the week, you can put them in here. 
Uh, I try not to use paper towel again with the whole idea of trying to be less, <laughs> more um, earth friendly in this house. But of course, if paper towel is what you have, you can wrap them on paper towel and keep them fresh in here for a little while. I try, I try to use like uh, uh, cloth, a napkin or uh, a kitchen uh, towel or something like that. So that is, let's say, end of summer. So then the cold is gonna start. And what I usually do is that I harvest as much as I can because we wanna use it during the winter. And the jars that I use are these simple bowl jars. And here are all the herbs that I pick up, harvested last fall. So this is rosemary and then I label them and um, you can use this and reuse them. And I just uh, invested on these labels where I have everything in both languages. So my husband and son can learn Spanish um, yeah. at the same time. But you know, this is just a fun way of keeping your kitchen organized and your kitchen going for the entire year. So there's no reason to stop cooking with your herbs, even though it's freezing outside. So I do that before you put them in the jars i have two systems first i of course harvest them and i have this great um herb dryer that comes you can hang this anywhere you should have seen how i used to hang this in brooklyn um <laughs> but it comes with these nice hooks and you just uh, make a little bouquet i use so cool. a kitchen so cord yeah. You can find photos of these all over. If you go to Pinterest, I'm sure you'll find all kinds of inspiration. So you make a little bundle and you just hang them. And once they, you see that they are dry, then you pick them up and put them in your jars. And there is your, you don't need to go and buy uh, dry herbs at the grocery store. You have them. Rosanna, I have to know, where do you hang that in your house? These, you know, the basement, we have a little the basement. Okay. Yeah. So I have, it's like one of those uh, Ikea shelves that are like uh, metal. Um, and that's where I hang it until everything is dry. But I have another, another technique, which is one that I use very often when I don't want to do the whole bundle or do not have time because who has the time to do all those bundles sometimes? So um, one of these baking racks, you put it on your counter kitchen, you put the herbs right in here, you cut them and you let it dry. And after a while, you'll have your dry herbs the same way as the other, uh, the herb rack that I just show you. About how it long does that take to dry? It really depends on the, on the um, herb. Um, our kitchen sometimes does look like an <laughs> like a lab. So of course, beautiful though, like that that chandelier of herbs. Oh yeah, the chandelier <laughs> is beautiful. The other thing, you know, we we are working on getting our kitchen um, uh, remodeled at some point, and uh, the idea is to connect the kitchen and the garden. And I, this is something that I didn't mention before, but when we were looking for houses with you, Lisa, we felt like the garden was an addition to the house. It's not something separate. So it was like an extra room. And we wanna do that with our kitchen uh, when we have uh, the time and the budget and everything to do it the way we want. But one of the uh, ideas going back to how I dry herbs is that we really use the kitchen for many things. It's not mm -hmm. always uh, magazine style. Rarely. Right. It's not, it doesn't look like a magazine because we actually cook and use yeah. it. And one of the things is to have this rack of herbs drying or packing or labeling things. So I, that's the ideal, right? What my kitchen will look at some point, I would love to have an area where I can actually uh, work on these projects as well. Yeah. Wow. Oh my gosh. This is fantastic information. Um, I do also want to ask one more thing, which is, and you may have kind of touched upon this throughout the past time that we've been together, but uh, you know, in our conversation, I said 
something about like, a, you know, common mistakes or whatever that, you know, that you have made that you could like help people. Yes, I have a lot of those. Just tell them it's okay or whatever. Yes. Well, first of all, like we talk of, uh, already is think about what you like. Think about how your garden works. Where's the sun? Where's the shade? Uh, all these, how easy is going to be for you to water that garden? Don't make it difficult. Make the, the whatever situation you have make it easy so it actually works for your busy schedule and for everything that's something that um it's a big mistake that we could like think about the the rooftop garden the way we had to water <laughs> that garden it was a ho it was hooked to the shower and we used to have a hose from our shower to the rooftop and Matthew wow. was on the phone downstairs and I was on the phone upstairs saying, okay, you can turn it on now and I will water the garden. So that's how difficult it was. And it was painful many days. So yeah, don't do you, that. Not <laughs> I did it. But yeah, don't yeah. do that. Don't do hurt. that. Just really, especially now, I feel like after the last two years that we all had, we don't need something more complicated a garden should be a place where you enjoy and takes yeah. you from the from the uh, all the stress that maybe all the things will bring to your yeah. daily life so the garden not that it's not going to be challenging because there will be challenges but make it as uh, logical as possible this is your kitchen door this is your garden right there where you have your herbs the water supply is closed uh, so those are some of the mistakes that obviously I have gone through. Um, other things that I've done um, is planting too early. And did I show you the basil that is really not happy with me today? There's a basil plant that I bought for you guys. And you can tell that it's really suffering in here because it's been so cold for the last two days. So we can always wait. Like basil is something that you can wait. Um, and I think the biggest mistake is to think that if you are not successful with something, you're never going to try it again. That mm -hmm. is probably the biggest mistake. And it's, that covers it's gonna like, happen. more than herbs. <laughs> yeah, everything. I mean, life. seriously, life. <laughs> but but exactly. with the herbs, with the plants, I feel like that's a fear that people have like, oh, no, I'm going to kill it. Well, that's okay. Okay. That means that it will be maybe too much water or too much sun. So that's going to make you figure it out. Like I have tried to grow ginger. I love ginger and I tried to grow ginger for years and I have not been successful ever. I'm going to try it again this year and hope that I will bring it inside when I have to because I have left it outside for too long. Same with lemons. I would love to grow our own lemon indoors in the in the winter and outside in the summer not successful but trying um or just not quitting because this is not about quitting but not um giving it another try until you're successful or until you realize oh you know what maybe ginger i just keep buying at the grocery yeah. store because i cannot grow, grow it and that's okay too yeah. <laughs> that is fine too yeah uh let me see if i have um uh, another um mistake i made um last year was that i used you know when you similar to what we talk about the herbs uh tomato uh they fall into the ground and then little volunteer plants they're called volunteer plants come the next year and sometimes uh you know like expert gardeners tell you be careful with the volunteers they cannot they could have diseases and this is when gardening overwhelms me and i'm like okay no i'm not gonna listen to that mm -hmm. um i'm just gonna do my best with what i got and i did use those volunteers as plants last year and i think they actually did not work because it, maybe the soil was not um uh, fertilized enough or I obviously made a mis some sort of mistake and we didn't have as many tomatoes as the year before. So these things happen. And, and I think 
what is also a factor is that not every year is going to be a good year for everything. Mm -hmm. So there will be good years like the pandemic year, that year with the tomatoes were, even though the squirrels were trying to eat them here, we had an incredible year of fresh tomatoes. Yeah. But then the following year, not. So, and that's that's just the way gardening yeah. is. And that's part of that that idea that we're not in control of everything. You know, you you do yeah. you cultivate and you you learn yeah. and yeah, you let go of certain things in the moment. Maybe um, we have a question from yes. Nod that says, uh, "Which herbs can be dried?" Oh, I think all are okay to be dried. Um, some um, sometimes people say it's better to freeze. Uh, basil instead of dry it um, or mint I think uh, is another one that they say maybe you don't want to dry maybe you want to uh, frozen I dry all of them I, I and and even the basil I just dry it and it becomes very dark like a grayish color but still when I use it in the winter for tomato sauce once you put it in the sauce, this the taste is delicious. So even though the color, I think sometimes people say if you blanch it, which is basically means you put the the herbs in water first for a second, and this is a cooking technique that I have yeah. never done. So I don't know if I'm telling you the exact um, system or process, but it's basically you sh you um, shock them with the water and they preserve the green color. Mm -hmm. It doesn't bother me to cook with uh, grayish basil because I know that it's gonna taste good. Yes. So I'm totally yes. fine with that. How about cilantro? Can cilantro, I also dry it, yes. And I, again, you, you may wanna do the opposite and just freeze it. And, and sometimes people, uh, what they show um, is that they uh, cut it and then they put it in ice cubes and then you put water and you make like ice cube cilantro cubes or basil cubes and that's what you add or mint i do that sometimes with mint and ginger for the winter i just make ice cubes because when i want like ginger water i just put an ice cube with oh, mint and ginger that's a great idea and it's very good for the summer that's good to uh, make ice cubes with herbs for the summer yeah it's very refreshing I'm excited. I'm excited. <laughs> it's, yeah, again, just work whatever you think that you, you want to start with. I always say, let me just show you the, I, I, I planted the uh, mint today, just to give you an idea. It was a plant just like this. And uh -huh. um, for the mint, very important is to keep them separate for anything from anything, because mint takes over. So it will choke your other herbs. So always keep it separate and you can start it in a little container like this. And if that's what you like, it will come back every year and you will have fresh mint um, the whole summer. Fantastic. So do you that's have one of the easy ones. Do you have a source that you purchase from or that you, you like to recommend or, um, you know, a, a brand of products that you, you know, where do you buy your stuff? That's what I'm asking. I use, um, I started at Home Depot. Uh, I'm sorry, at Lowe's. When we were in Brooklyn, we will go to Lowe's because it was the closest. Here we use both, Home Depot and Lowe's because we have both. Um, and we also have really lovely garden centers. My favorite in the area is the Great Swamp mm -hmm. uh, in Gillette, I think, New Jersey. It's okay. beautiful. It's huge. They have very a lot of perennials and native plants, and it's a wonderful place to go. Uh, but there are a lot. We have a lot here uh, where you can, whichever you prefer, you can go to for um, like garden containers and things. Years ago, I started working with gardeners, which is I mentioned it on on my bio, so you guys know. Uh, the reason why in my Instagram you see a lot of gardeners is because I, I have been testing for gardeners for many years. And we met through Instagram where they saw what I was doing and they said, do, we, do you want to test these products for 
awesome. And that's what I've been doing. So I do like their products and I love them too. They're really wonderful people. But of course, I'm not selling anything here. You don't have to buy things from gardeners. Um, you can use them or you can use whichever you prefer. I like to buy seeds too, but this is another topic. And I, um, uh, there are some in Vermont and some in Oregon, uh, upstate New York, um, really great companies that also sell plants too, if you want to buy plants or um, again, tools for your garden. Um, but anything works, whatever, whatever you are. Um, Don't your yourself. hands are great too. Like with cooking, yeah. I do use my hands for cooking and for gardening. Yeah. Um, we have a question uh, or, or yes. a comment. Farm at Green Village and Williams in Westfield are also nice and have some unusual. That's true. Great place, place too. Mm -hmm. I love the um, Westfield. Uh, oh, nursery. so beautiful to go there. Mm -hmm. yes such a treat for the senses and just um, very lucky yeah We're very lucky yes mm -hmm. awesome so, so um everyone uh i just wanted to make note that we are at the 8 30 hour um oh, okay i'm i'm thinking if anyone has any additional questions that's the first thing please uh raise your hand using uh zoom or type it into chat and rosanna just um final closing remarks um what's good and uh what are you looking forward to most this summer well i'm gonna try ginger again <laughs> and i this year because it has been so busy um i did not uh grow any seeds so this year i'm looking forward to going to the great swamp and trying new tomatoes i'm gonna try a couple of new tomatoes um, I just bought this Mexican tarragon that is looking very sad too. It needs some water, but I have French tarragon and I don't know what the difference is between French tarragon and Mexican tarragon. So I will investigate that. Um, I do have Greek oregano, Italian oregano, but I, I lost my Mexican oregano. So I want to add that to the garden as well. And um, other things that I like to try is that my sister in Florida grows her peppers uh, from Puerto Rico. So I hope that uh, she sends me some new ones this year so I can try them, try to grow a little bit of the Caribbean uh, oh, here wonderful. in the Garden State. So, yeah, that'll be fun. Yes. You... Another thing I wanted to say one before we say goodbye, yeah. sorry, Lisa, to interrupt you. No. Years ago, I visited a school as part of my other job. Um, it was near Coney Island and it was a school garden. And the community has so many people from all over the world that there were 16 languages in the garden. So um, they were labeling all the plants in all the 16 languages. So every child will feel you know, this is their garden. They even had chickens. It's really a great school. Anyway, I want to try to do that with our garden. I started with our herbs in the kitchen and uh, pantry to do the bilingual pantry. I want to do the labeling also in two languages, but more so that from that experience visiting that school was to see that they were also growing herbs and vegetables from all those 16 countries oh something just something from your grandmother something that you grew up with something just so stones. That, that is so special yes. i love that it was very yeah. special to see that so i love the idea of you know if you have your background somewhere else your ancestors your grandparents or where your family came from and you want to go for it and try to grow something uh that will make your family happy and remember why you're here <laughs> just that is beautiful. that's a really nice yeah. thing yeah i you know you make me remember rosanna my my grandparents uh came from Palo de cole in puglia italy and with them they brought an arugula plant a single arugula oh. plant and it grew, it came back year after year after year. And the taste was so different from what we get now. It was more peppery. It was a mm -hmm. stronger flavor. 
Um, and I always looked forward to that uh, in the summertime. It was really beautiful. It was very special that, to have that that piece of us from from a different country. That's where great. Well, yeah. Carla, where is it? Is you it know, in it's York lost to time, Lisa. It's somewhere on Long Island now. It went from Brooklyn. <laughs> it went from East New York, Brooklyn, to uh, to Bro to Long Island, and it's been lost somewhere in that. Go in search of that. Yes, yes. you need some seeds. <laughs> There, that's very easy to grow. I really uh, yeah, it's true. It's true. It's somewhere on Sutter Sutter Avenue in East New York. <laughs> Gotta go there and get those seeds. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you so much. And I, I just, I have to say, you're just such a uh, wonderful gift to the community. You know, with your um, positivity and the beautiful things that you produce in your home and you share with everyone, um, both plants gardening, herbs, flowers, and art. You know, you guys are just such lovely um, people and neighbors to have uh, and to engage with. And thank you so much for sharing your love and enthusiasm for this. Um, oh, you're beautiful, very welcome. Beautiful. We're very happy here and we love the community. That's something that uh, we, of course, didn't know when we moved, although we, we had some friends that were already here who have told us how wonderful this area is. And it's just great to have both worlds. You know, we still go into the city for the gallery and for yeah. my job, but we are here and I, I post a lot of things. And even though sometimes they look huge, please know that it's a tiny garden, it's very manageable. Yeah. is not you know it's not impossible to do everyone can really have um, a similar garden a plant that you love and you love to eat even if it's that arugula that you're talking about carla just one arugula uh, garden know. you I could know. have that and, and enjoy it's true um, that's true. So, That's so, so where can everybody find you, Rosanna? Where can we find you on Instagram? And how can we get in contact with you if we want to ask you a question? So I have a website and have my email. And uh, Instagram is probably the best place. That's really uh, what I use most. And I try, I love to exercise too, as you probably will notice, or you have noticed. Uh, that's part of the whole uh, routine, you know, using the garden for a place to move or be outside. And so you will see um, a lot of that. And I'm happy to share, uh, you know, we even have like a neighbor's walking group where we all go and ex make sure that we exercise together. So we try to keep um, each other um, sane and healthy. Uh, and you're welcome to contact me for that as well. Uh, my, I'm trying to find how you can find me in, <laughs> in Instagram. Okay, I changed my name. That's why it's Art Life by Rosanna. Um, Art my name, by Rosanna. yeah, Art Life by Rosanna. And I was telling Lisa <laughs> how my name. It's the Italian version of Rosanna, so it has two S's, one N, and a lot of times um, it's confusing. So it's Art Life Rosanna um, in Instagram. And the website is, um, I had changed my website as well. It's artlifeandmovement.com. Artlifeandmovement.com. Yes. Okay. Okay. So we know where to find you. And yeah, hopefully, you know. Yeah, this has been wonderful. Yes, please. Yeah, seeing you around. Let's talk gardening. Absolutely, absolutely. So this will be up um, on Soma at Home and accessible um, in a variety of places. I will also put up your contact information again, Rosanna, so Hi. we know where to find you. Um, and with that, I would like to bid everyone a fabulous evening. And Rosanna, thank you again so much for being in with your oh, yes, uh, with that was great. Thank uh, you so much. Thank you so much. Website. And happy yeah. gardening, everybody. Happy spring. Yes, happy soon. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much for everyone that um, Take care. came. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>